Okay, so we are at the Christ the King Parish where the burial service of the late Professor Emerita Nanaba Apt just, uh, was just completed. Uh, she's on her way to being buried, but I'm here with Mr. Ani Safa, a prominent educationist and a very good friend to uh, the late Professor Emerita Nanaba Apt. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Anis. Good morning. Okay, so being here this morning and um, taking us a little back, hearing about Prof's death, uh, how did it hit you? Well, you know, she's been, uh, we are neighbors. You know, anytime I go for a walk, I go past the house. And uh, I knew she was not well. And my wife and I went to visit, my wife and I went to visit her at the, uh, uh, at the military hospital, 37. And uh, she told us she was going to come back home. And she got home, but the next time I heard, you know, she had, she had, she had passed. Wow. So it, was a, so it was quite a disappointment in the sense that she's my mentor and I, I owe a lot to her. Wow. Okay, so reminiscing, going back, uh, what would you remember her for? What did she stand for? Well, you know, she was very concerned, one, about Ghanaian children, especially the girl child. And she was also concerned about the relevant kind of education that would put students in a better stead. You know, and uh, she lived by the examples that she set. And uh, she, frankly, uh, I remember she called me, she had read something that I've written on leadership. And she invited me to come to a fourth year class where I happened to speak to the students. After that, she suggested that I, I, I taught leadership seminars at Ashesi, which I did for a couple of uh, years, I think. You know, so her loss, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's profound especially for people who knew her, for Ashesi University and for the young people that she touched. Uh, she was, I, I remember another time where she invited me to come to Shamar with her, you know, to look at this, uh, the state of the public education there, and where I met then the, uh, the DCE, Emilia Arthur, and I had a chance to go through the, uh, the schools that they have to make some recommendations in terms of how we can add value to the, uh, the nature of the courses that they were teaching the nature of the methodology and so on. So she's always been influential in education and uh, I'm really going to miss her because she's a mentor. She's always been a mentor to me. And uh, whenever, and a couple of times, so uh, she got me to do a review of her book that she had edited about the rights of children at the British Council. And another time she got me to do a review uh, at the uh, a French department at the University of Ghana. So she's always been with me. And many times when there were things that she had to do and she had to travel, she asked me to, uh, to sit in her stead. Uh, so, you know, she, she's been quite influential. I've lost a wonderful friend. You know, many times I remember where we sit by her, on her veranda overlooking the Atlantic Ocean, where she fixes fix tea, cheese that she would bring from Holland and so on, biscuits. And whenever they are friends, and we met quite a few of them here, she would invite me to meet them. So she's, uh, th th she's left a void in my life in terms of her concern for the international community, her concern for how we can bridge the gap between the international community and, uh, and our own uh, local children and how we can lift them up to high, uh, bigger heights. So it's, 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 it, this is, it's a void that would be very difficult to fill. All right. Um, it's very evident that you had a very personal relationship with her. Now she's gone and um, the battle still continues. So do you have any intention to continue some of the things that she advocated for, some of the things she stood for? Yes, yes, especially children's rights. You know, what I remember about her, especially the review that I did at the British Council was that, look, we cannot depend on the culture to support the children because the Ghanaian culture does not really respect children that much. Okay. So she really focused on what you call the three, uh, three P's, that children have the right for protection. In other words, society's interest to protect the children, the right for, uh, of provision, that whatever children need, we have to be in a position to provide for them. And then also the right of participation, that we have to pull children in so that they are part of the decision-making process. You know, children are children, but we are not raising them to be children. We are raising them to be adults. So th these are the concerns that she has. And the re frankly, the reason why we connected 
is that the two of us share similar views and aspirations for children. So that work co uh, continues. It's a commitment that I have. And uh, many times, uh, whenever I write, sometimes when I write my columns, I have her in mind in terms of what concerns that she has and how we can help children out. Because, you know, she was not interested in superstition. Uh, she was not interested in child marriages. She, and then the other part is also con very much concerned about uh, taking care of older people. I remember when she brought her mother to her house, she called me, I met the mother. The mother was quite old, but she was there for her. And that really set me an example for me because my mother is now 92. And the care, the attention and the passion that she, uh, she had for her mother. Back to your question, these are the things that resonate in, uh, from her heart. And uh, now that she's gone, I think we, we've become evangelists for many of the things that she believed in. You know, and she, the other thing is that she liked things to be very simple, as you can see from her funeral. She didn't like uh, things to be very difficult. And then uh, the other thing too I remember is that um, her view of academia is very uh, uh, different from the way a lot of people see academia. Uh, what she believes, and this is a very important thing here, what she believes is that academia should go less on the lectures, less on the talk, so that they are visibly doing important things in community in very practical terms and not the lectures, lectures and the meetings and the meetings. She really was tired of those things. So what she told me was that when she left and went to Aishesi uh, University, it opened a whole new era for her because these were times where she could do things as opposed to talking things. You know, so Aishesi really, she made an impact on Aishesi and I she made an impact on her. And I'm very grateful that she pulled me in with her so that I could do and emulate some of the things that she did. In fact, the, the first profile uh, of uh, the leadership that I was teaching, the, um, the documentation that I needed to get that done successfully, I borrowed those things from her. Wow. You know, so she really took me on to another level and I really appreciate her life. Wow. Now, the difficulty for me now is that I walk past her house when I go for my evening walks. And to walk past there every day, as I did yesterday, that's going to be very difficult for me. But you know, uh, she's in the right place, and that's a comfort that I get from the, uh, the time that I've known her and spent with her. Sure, sure, thank you very much, Mr. Anisafa. Uh, finally, I was having a program with her on Radio Universe. It was on Thursday mornings, dubbed with the people. In fact, the whole program was centered around her, and um, it was very insightful. Now that she's gone, we'll be looking forward to find people to fill her shoes and make sure that the concept is maintained and we can impact a lot of lives out there. So we'll be calling on you since you've um, expressed your availability. Uh, don't be surprised when we call on you. Sure, the anytime, team. anytime, because uh, Radio Universe meant a lot to her. In fact, what she told me was that she used to do those programs a long time ago. Sure. And she really insisted in coming back because there were a lot of things that she wanted to share, especially from her book. Yeah. You know, play to win. Yeah. You know, and it, uh, she did it, I think, a few times, so she got sick and she couldn't do it anymore. But then, of course, you know, I'm always available to you. You know, and uh, you guys are doing a good job. I Thank think you. He, he will, she would like you guys to continue doing what you're doing. Right. A lot that we can do to help out. We'll always be there and available for you. Right. So Thank God you. Bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you too. That was prominent educationist Mr. Anisa for speaking to us here at Christ the King Parish, the burial service of the late Professor Emerita Nana Araba Apt, University TV. Keep on watching.